no, you need some me time already. It's not me time. It's I'm gonna kick your ass time. I think we both know you only kick ass after eating a hot dog. I could be drinking a juice box and still kick your ass. I don't think so, because I have this. Just read it to me. Harvey Specter, you are summoned to appear. You gotta be kidding me. You're subpoenaing me? Oh yeah. I filed a TRO. I'm gonna block your tender offer. Bullsh you are. Well, we'll see what the judge has to say. Oh, right, you got your hands full. Here, let me get that for you. There you go. Hearings at two. I'll see you then. Oh, Harvey, the suit, it's a little dated for court. Don't you think? Harvey, Harvey, can I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, sure, come on in. I was actually hoping that we could talk What's in the... my office. Uh, you're early. Did you? Oh, you two haven't met. Rachel Logan, Logan Rachel. Well, I guess you didn't. Didn't what? We actually have met before. That's why I was trying to find you. To tell me you met our client? No, to tell you that we used to be in a relationship together. You looking to get back together? No. no. Then I don't give a shit. Good. Then we can move on to why you didn't tell me that the guy on the other side of this fight used to be your associate. I was going to. When? In 20 minutes when you were scheduled to be here. Unfortunately, I have to reschedule. Why? I have court. Mike's alleging I broke privilege. Did you? Yes, technically, when I told you to move up our timeline. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait a minute, if you, if you broke privilege, what are you gonna tell the judge? I don't know, but until I think of something, I'm gonna confuse the shit out of everyone I can. That doesn't make any sense. No, it makes total sense. No, it doesn't, Your Honor. All right, hold on. Let me get this straight, you work for him. Worked, I was his associate. Not the best associate, Your Honor. Is that relevant? No, but I'd like it on the record. Well, it's on there now, whether we want it there or not. And all I'm saying is, there's no attorney-attorney privilege. And finally, a fact. An irrelevant fact, because at the time of the conflict, I was his client. And not the best client, either. No. Mr. Spector, shut up. Now you're his client. No, oh, I was his client, okay. I was an associate at Pearson Specter, and then I left to become an investment banker. Yeah, it's very confusing. I dismissed the whole motion, Your Honor. I said shut up. Are you an attorney or an investment banker? I'm an investment banker. Then what the hell are you doing in my chambers? Acting as my own attorney. And, and no matter how much he tries to confuse the issue, he can't. I told him I was going after the same company he was, and he used that knowledge to move up his tender offer. He waived conflict. That doesn't apply to privilege. Bottom line is, he doesn't have proof of anything. I don't, but he does. Unfortunately, he can't force me to testify. There's no precedent. Fortunately, there is. So go ahead, ask him if he did what I'm saying. Mr. Spector, do I need to swear you in? Give him the tiara. You know, I'll do more than that. Not only can't your client make a tender offer for 60 days, they can't purchase any more stock until then either. I'm telling you, we need to negotiate with him. You mean pay him off? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Every day this drags on, it's millions out of your pocket. Well, from where I'm sitting, all I can see is a lawyer trying to distract me from the fact that this whole thing is his fault. If I didn't break privilege, he might have locked this whole thing up before you knew what hit you. Fine, we'll negotiate. No, I'll negotiate. No, not without me. Do I need to draw you a picture? You, Mike? Rachel? Harvey, I appreciate your concern, but this is my first deal, so unless you're gonna pay him off with your money, I'm gonna be at that meeting. Harvey, what are you doing here? You said it yourself, I never brought you a gift when you moved in. Still don't see an orchid. Flowers die. I thought I'd bring something better. Me, across the table from you. Where's your client? He doesn't need to be here. This fight started with you and me. So let's you and me settle it right now. You mean you don't want him here because you don't think Logan Sanders and I can be in the same room? I don't think I know. Harvey, I'm a grown man. I can sit across the table from somebody who had a history with Rachel. Maybe, but you both have a brain and a dick, and if you get in that room together, the brains aren't gonna be leading that conversation. Fine. You tell me that you have the authority to negotiate a deal and I'll negotiate. But you can't, because you don't. And I'm not gonna to agree to something here today just to have Logan reject it tomorrow. So go home, get some sleep, and then the three of us will do this again in the morning. Not that it's any of my business, but it was straight before. I know. Oh, I get it. Look less together, get underestimated. <sighs> You gotta wave your hand slower. Thanks. No problem. 
If you want soap, you just click your heels together three times. Well, how do you think I'm planning on getting that dryer to work? <laughs> you know, you'd think you wouldn't have these problems considering what you guys charge. Oh, no, I don't work here. But you, uh... I used to. You're Mike Ross. And you're Logan Sanders. <laughs> Baby Tom. Don't mind if I do. After you. Don't mind if I do. I see you two have met. We have. <sighs> and don't underestimate him because of his tie. I have always estimated that tie correctly. Now, can we talk about business? It depends on what you're proposing. That you walk away. Well, that doesn't sound like much of a deal. Well, he forgot to add the part where you walk away $20 million richer. Pure profit, no risk. Win, win. Sounds good. I guess I just have one question. What exactly are you going to do with this company? All due respect, I don't see how that's any of your concern. All due respect, you're the one coming to me with an offer. So if I say it's my concern, it is. Mike, you're asking about a competitor's business plan. And if he wants to not be competitors, then he needs to answer my question. OK, I'll tell you. I'm going to do what anyone would and sell it for parts. <laughs> no deal. OK, Mike. You win. Let's uh, make it 30 million. You can make it a billion, Logan, and the answer is still going to be the same. Because I made a promise to Walter Gillis that I would fight to keep his company alive. And I don't think he's going to believe that cutting a deal to sell his workers out is keeping that promise. I thought you said he was smart. I am, which is why I know what's going on here. What exactly is that? No one ever tells you no. You're used to getting what you want. But that's going to stop right now. You're right. I do always get what I want. I don't see how this time's going to be any different. I'll tell you how it's going to be different. This time, you're talking about something that I care about. So if you think I'm going to step aside. Yeah, I don't care do. if you step aside or not. When I see something I want, I take it. And then I do whatever the hell I want with it. And what I want to do with this company is strip it down, flip it over. Okay, that's enough. No, 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 let him talk. I want to hear this. Keep going, Sanders. No, I don't need to, because you know how this ends. Yeah, I do, with me and Walter Gillis on one side and you crying to your daddy on the other. We're done. You're right. We are. Listen to me. The next time I say don't come to a meeting, don't come to a meeting. Hey, he came at me just as hard as- I don't as give a what he did. Now, if you'll excuse me. Where are you going? To get you this company. What are you talking about? Weren't you listening? He just gave up his weak spot. Walter Gillis knows what he's doing. Yes, yeah, so do I. He's letting your pension go unfunded so he can hoard a billion dollars. No. That money is earmarked for expansion into Asia, and I believe in Walter's vision. You might, but do the workers you represent? You're acting as if our fund is empty. I'm acting as if it's 40% full. And let me guess, you're going to fill up the rest. Someone else wants to acquire Gillis's company before we can make an offer. If you vote to block it, we will fully fund your pension the day we take over. talking about me selling out my friend. I'm talking about $500 million. And why can you fund it and they can't? Well, they can with half that billion, but they won't because, like I said, he's hoarding it for that pipe dream. You're going to take that billion for yourselves. Half. The other half goes to you and your union, the man Walter Gillis supposedly cares about. Pete, this is going to happen whether it's me or someone else, and someone else may not give you the chance to do what you were elected to do. Protect your people.